Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is the place where we get real. And today I'm getting real about yeast infections because we don't really talk about them a lot. It's kind of an awkward slash embarrassing issue for women to talk about. It shouldn't be, but we make it be awkward and embarrassing because we just don't talk about this stuff as often as we should and we really need to normalize it. So I'm here today to share with you some really effective hacks so that you can stop getting yeast infections because nothing is more annoying than getting one of those bad boys. So make sure you keep on watching to say goodbye to those yeast infections for good. Welcome back to my channel. Are you serious with me? Oh my god, oh my god! <laughs> I don't understand how these things always happen to me. So, little known fact about me, when I was younger, I used to get yeast infections all the time. Like, I was getting them at least like two or three times a year. And one of the reasons that I was getting them so badly was because I wasn't actually doing anything about them. I was kind of ignoring them and hoping they would just go away because I felt so embarrassed to tell anyone that I had a yeast infection because, you know, it's an infection that happens down there. And we make women feel super awkward about talking about anything related to down there, which is our vulva or our vagina. We get taught that that's like a bad word to say out loud. And then we create all this shame around it and women feel too embarrassed to go and see the doctor and get help. The good news is if you have a yeast infection, they're actually super treatable and they're really nothing to be embarrassed about because they happen to most women and it really is very quick and easy to get rid of one. If you have one, you can actually just get a cream that you get at the pharmacy and you can get it completely over the counter. You don't need a prescription for it and it will usually make your yeast infection go away in as little as a couple of days so you can get back to normal. But it is always best to get checked out by a doctor first to make sure that that is what you have because sometimes yeast infections can be confused with STIs or other types of infections like bacterial infections. So it's good to see your doctor first and just remember your doctor has seen a whole lot of vaginas and a whole lot of yeast infections and STIs and all kinds of things. So it's really nothing to be embarrassed about at all. Now, once you've got your yeast infection treated, you want to make sure that you're not going to get one again and then again because those suckers can just keep on coming back. Oh, ha ha, <laughs> it's so funny. My vagina is depressed. So here are my tips for what you can do to stop them from coming back, particularly if you're someone that tends to get a lot of them. I do wanna obviously preface this by saying I am not a doctor or a medical professional, but these are hacks that have worked for me. I have not had a yeast infection now in years. These hacks really work and I know many other women that they've been useful for, so hopefully they help you guys out. All right, let's get into hack number one. Stop cleaning your vagina. You don't need to constantly scrub it and douche it and fragrance it and put soaps on it. This is like a big lie that our culture has told us is that our vaginas are constantly dirty and constantly smell terrible and we need to put perfumes and stuff down there and make them smell like a summer's day or make them smell like a bouquet of flowers. No, a vagina is supposed to smell like a vagina and that's just the way it is. So if you are someone who uses things like, you know, Summer's Eve or those like Femme Fresh products and uses constantly just like lots of soaps and things down there, please stop. Because what that does is it throws off your pH balance and you have a very delicate pH balance going on down there. And the more fragrances and soaps and products you put down there, the more you're gonna throw that out of whack. And that basically creates the perfect environment for a yeast infection to thrive. So if you want to clean your vagina, just let the water run over it in the shower. You can go a little bit more thoroughly with a washcloth. And I do actually have a whole video where I actually show you exactly how to do that. So if you wanna go watch that by all means, I will link it up here. But apart from that, please do not douche, do not put soaps or fragrances down there. You don't need them and they are just going to set you up for a yeast infection. 
If you are someone who is constantly stressed out, me, it's me, it's, yep, yeah, it me. I am one stressed out bitch. <laughs> I really am always stressed. But if you are like me and you are someone who just constantly is like anxious and in their head and always stressing, 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 well, you might also be someone who gets a lot of yeast infections because when we are stressed, our immune system actually drops. So we get lowered immunities. This is why stress is like so bad for the body. So we can actually end up getting more colds, more flus, just feeling more tired all the time, feeling more like just in a bad, irritable mood, like we want to bite people's heads off. And we can also get yeast infections because once our immune system is lowered, that creates the perfect environment for yeast to really thrive. And so it is not coincidental at all that many women end up with a yeast infection at the end of preparing for like a big stressful exam or a big presentation or something at work, or maybe even at the end of like a relationship breakup or something. So do whatever you can to reduce your stress levels. Now I'm a high stress person and I know this. So I've started doing all sorts of things. I take supplements. There are some really good supplements you can take to help lower your stress levels. There's one called ashwagandha, which I have found very helpful for me in just getting that anxiety and that stress down. And then exercise is a really great one for reducing stress. When I am feeling really stressed, I like to go to the gym or go for a run or even just go for a walk. Do something that you enjoy. Like don't do exercise that you hate, but do something that's gonna help you work through that stress. Because if you just live with your stress, you are gonna get yeast infections and they're gonna keep coming back. So you've gotta get that stress under control. That means getting lots of sleep, eating well, exercising, and just doing things to get on top of that stress as much as you can. Now, really tight fitting clothing, particularly tight fitting clothing that you're getting all hot and sweaty in, can also create an environment for yeast to start breeding and end you up with a yeast infection. And so a lot of girls who frequently go to the gym and wear active wear to the gym and then stay in their active wear all day often end up getting yeast infections. If you go to the gym, wear your active wear by all means. But as soon as you get home from the gym, you need to take those tights off and have a shower. Even if you're exhausted, just force yourself to have that shower because otherwise all of that sweat that is kind of built up in your tights, that is going to start creating that really bad environment where yeast can really just go crazy and you are gonna end up getting a yeast infection. So always when you finish that workout, change into something loose fitting. I'm not saying you have to stop wearing tight fitting clothes, but wherever possible, avoid it. So if you wear skinny jeans every single day, maybe consider only wearing them a couple of times a week and switching up for some loose shorts or even a skirt, just something that's gonna let this area down here just breathe a little bit. It needs to breathe too. Our skin needs to breathe, our vagina needs to breathe, we all need to breathe. So let your JJ breathe and you will definitely help to keep those yeast infections away. A bad diet can be a really huge contributing factor to recurrent yeast infections. Yeast in particular feed off sugar. So if you are someone who eats a ton of candy and a ton of processed food, you might also be someone who gets quite a lot of yeast infections. The best way to get on top of those recurrent yeast infections is to cut back on the sugar. I'm not saying you have to cut sugar out of your diet because we all like some candy. And I personally, big chocolate person. Don't think I could live without my chocolate actually, but you do need to cut back on it. So make those sweets just a treat that you have every so often and don't be having tons of candy every day, particularly things like diet, like soft drinks, all of those sorts of things, they are full of all of that stuff that yeast thrive on. Even fake sugar can be really bad. So just switch out that soda pop that you're having, switch that out for just some water or even just some water with some fruit in it to make it a little bit more tasty, but just try not to be having tons of sugar every day because that is just going to be the worst possible setup for getting that yeast 
thriving and winding up with recurrent yeast infections. Now, if you've actually already done all those things and you're still getting yeast infections, definitely go to the doctor because frequent yeast infections can be a sign of something else, a different health issue going on. Often people who have diabetes get a lot of yeast infections, so it's worth going and making sure that you've been checked for that. And also speak to your doctor if you're on a birth control pill because birth control pills can throw our hormones out of whack and that in turn can throw our pH downstairs out of whack and end us up with a whole bunch of yeast infections. So do make sure that if you're doing all these things already and the yeast infections are still coming on thick and fast, then do speak to your doctor. There is nothing embarrassing about having a yeast infection. Most women have them at some stage in their lives, but you don't have to live with them. There is something you can do about them, so please don't ignore them. Now, if you want more advice on not just yeast infections, but periods and sex stuff as well, because I talk a ton about sex on this channel and particularly sexual pleasure for women, then I would love you to hit that subscribe button and join my sex positive family. I make videos here usually twice a week, sometimes more if I have the time, and I would love you to be a part of my fam bam. So go and do that and give this video a thumbs up while you're at it because that helps me out in the algorithm as well. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Mwah.